Hello everyone. Uh, so we'll continue our discussion of the kinematics chapter, and we'll continue uh, with train. So in the previous lecture, previous part of the lecture, uh, we had seen that uh, the d small x square, the magnitude square, can be expressed by this huge thing, where each one of this e11, e22, etc. Uh, these are given by these huge expressions in turn. Now, uh, with this knowledge in hand, it is very much possible to uh, to denote this equation uh, in a very neat and clean fashion using the index notation. So, uh, we'll do that very quickly, and we'll see that it is not just for the purpose of uh, denoting it in a nice and clean fashion. Uh, Later on, we'll see that the use of the index notation will also help us in deriving some very useful uh, formula. Uh, so, with that in mind, uh, we'll quickly write down the this particular equation again, but using the index notation. All right. So, the d small x square magnitude. Uh, We take the magnitude of the vector square and that is equal to, so quickly glancing back at the previous slide, this entire thing which is uh, the d capital X vector magnitude square. So, now the rest of it, this thing this is where we are actually going to use the index notation. So this can be quickly written down as twice the xi the xj e i j where each of these e i j's or different combinations of i and j will be denoting each of those e11, e22, e33 that we have seen in the previous slide. Now it is very important to note uh, and uh, in general it is always important to note that whenever we use the index notation we should check very quickly before proceeding any further whether the consistency of the order of the tensors is maintained uh, in the equation or not. So what do I mean by the consistency of the order of the tensors? You see in this equation it's actually a very simple thing. So uh, you see on the left hand side we have this dx vector which is itself a vector a ten which is uh, more formally a tensor of order 1 but when we take the magnitude of that you understand very well that this is a scalar. So that's a scalar square so it is very much a scalar again. So the left hand side is a scalar. So it is absolutely necessary that the right hand side has to be a scalar. So that is what is uh, meant by the consistency of the order of the tensors. So first, uh, the first term on the right hand side that poses no problem. We are uh, we know that uh, just like the left hand side, this first term on the right hand side, this one, the d capital X vector magnitude, that is very much a scalar. The square of that is a scalar, no problem. Now what about this term? Uh, now uh, you see here, there is an index i, but it is not a free index. It is actually repeated here. So here is a i and here is another i as the first index of the second order tensor eij. So I repeat i is repeated here. Similarly the index j which is present here that also is repeated. So all the indices that are present in this term they are repeated. There is not a single free index. So these, uh, these repeated indices uh, you perhaps have already come across this term they are also re uh, referred to as dummy indices. So they do not contribute to the order of the tensor. So overall here because there is not a single free index whatever indices are there they are in the form of dummy indices or repeated indices the order of the tensor here is 0. Now we know that the tensor of order 0 is nothing but a scalar so this term again is also a scalar so overall as far as the consistency of the orders is uh, of the orders orders of the tensors is concerned the left hand side 
is perfectly matching with the right hand side they are all scalars that is what is basically meant here now uh, it will be also useful to uh, write down very quickly the expression in index notation for this eij so where eij is equal to so what we are attempting here it will be a massive uh, save in uh, in labor uh, you see whatever i had written in the previous slide here to these six equations to these six expressions 1 2 3 4 5 6 expressions uh, that i am going to write down in a single shot using the uh, index notation so how can i do that so half del ui del xj plus del uj del xi plus del uk del xi del uk del xj now if you are not very familiar with the index notation uh, it might seem like almost like black magic to you what i have what i have just done but if you are little bit familiar if you have practiced a little bit with the index notation you will see that whatever we have written down in the previous slide through these large expressions they are exactly replicated through different choices of the i and j here and you can actually test it out yourself by simply uh, substituting uh, for example i equal to 1 j equal to 1 here in which case you will you should be able to get back the expression for e11 that we had written earlier and please note that i am not saying anything about the k because the k here is a repeated index which means that summation is in, implied here so no matter what you what choice of i and j you have the k is always going to be repeated so it is in fact representing three terms in itself so there should be a u11 here a u22 here and a u33 here and which is how you obtain these three terms where you'll see that in each of these you have a u1 u2 u3 here is also you have u1 u2 u3 similarly let's say for e23 we have u11 here u22 here u33 here so all of these things can be obtained by uh, such by repeating the index k here so I'll, i'll quickly put down a note here so you can check for yourself by substituting different values of i and j by putting different values of i and j of oh, sorry of i and j so you should be able to obtain whatever we had written in the previous slide okay now uh, we quickly note down a few important things here so uh, this eij which is basically in compact notation this second order tensor uh, this is referred to as the finite strain tensor so this is referred to as a finite strain tensor and immediately uh, you should be asking yourself so does it mean that there is something like a non finite or an infinite symbol strain tensor so answer is yes there is very much uh, such a strain tensor and which is what actually we'll be using throughout uh, the rest of this course and we'll discuss about that a little later uh, the next important thing to note as i've already mentioned is that this eij because you see Uh, it has 
two free indices. There are no repeated indices here. So I is a free index, J is a free index. Uh, so it is a second order tensor. So it's a second order tensor. Furthermore, we have already seen that Eij is equal to Eji. So we have discussed about that in the previous part of the lecture, uh, which is what actually led to the presence of these factors of 2 here. So we had discussed that E12 is exactly equal to E21, E23 is exactly equal to E32 and E31 is exactly equal to E13 and that is what is meant in brief in the index notation by writing this thing as Eij is equal to Eji and uh, that basically means that is symmetric. Now in terms of actual use, uh, so uh, this second order tensor here, it basically means that in terms of the matrix representation, it can be expressed as a, uh, this Eij it can be represented as a 3 into 3 matrix. So what I mean by that is you have E11, E12, E13. Now, uh, Strictly speaking, we have E21 here, but we have already seen that E21 is equal to E12, so we don't need to write this separately, so we'll put it back as E12. This is E23. Similarly, ideally I should be putting here E31, but I understand that E31 is equal to E13. So I just put it, put this as E13. Similarly here I should be putting here as E32 but I will just use E23 because both of them are equal and finally I have E33 and that is in the form of a matrix. So you see that the six components that we had written here, these six components that are present here in the previous slide, they, ca they are captured within this matrix you have actually six independent components here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So one last thing about this uh, symmetric second order tensor is that uh, if you go back to this expression, you note that this is a linear term. This itself is a linear term. What I mean by linear here is that uh, this is of course a first order derivative uh, but uh, there is no square or any higher order powers involved here. Uh, it is also not multiplied with another second or another first, uh, first order term. But this third term, this by itself is a first order derivative. This by itself is a first order derivative but since they are multiplied together these are actually the non-linear contributions to the definition of this Eij and we can explicitly see that in the previous slide where you see here the first one the del u1 del x1 all these things here also del u1 uh, del x2 plus del u2 del x1 all these things they are the linear parts but here you have the non-linear or the actually the quadratic parts. So here is the quadratic nature represented by this uh, degree 2. Uh, here also you have uh, 
So there is no degree 2 here, but they are actually multiplied together. Two linear terms are multiplied together. So they are the quadratic terms here. So, so you understand that overall, the expression of the finite strain tensor, it involves in general, this kind of nonlinear terms. Now, uh, in the next part of the lecture, what we are going to discuss is what happens if the magnitude of each of these linear terms is very, very small. So uh, we are going to discuss that next. Thank you.